Devin Haney just released his intense training footage, and Ryan Garcia has reacted to it with an insane message for Haney. Yeah, I don't look like that. I don't look like that. I don't look like that. Come on. Come on. In addition, Garcia has revealed his plans to make a significant announcement during the inaugural press conference leading up to his highly anticipated bout against Haney. Garcia said, I have a surprise for NY during the press conference. A new teammate. Trust me when I say you don't want to miss these press conferences. Meanwhile, on Wednesday night, Golden Boy Promotions, headed by Oscar De La Hoya and representing Garcia while organizing the fight, declared that the Haney showdown would occur in New York instead of Las Vegas. The event will be hosted at the Barclays Center, which has a seating capacity of 19,000 and serves as the home venue for the Brooklyn Nets basketball team. Talking about it, De La Hoya tweeted, Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney can always fight in Vegas and sell out an arena. Together, they will sell out New York and mark themselves as the coast-to-coast -coast star of American boxing. However, Gervonta Davis is eager to emphasize that the event won't reach the same level of financial success without his participation. In response to the news of their fight being scheduled for New York, he tweeted, See the difference, along with a smirking face emoji. As per his usual practice, Davis promptly removed his tweet shortly afterward. Eddie Hearn seems to think that there is a link between the change of venue for Garcia versus Haney and Canelo Alvarez's anticipated comeback to Las Vegas in May. No, I'm seeing Bill today. Okay. Um, I think that's the fight for everybody. Yeah, it's definitely agree. the fight for Dazun. It's definitely the fight for Devin. Is it the right fight for Ryan? We'll find out, but you know, Ryan wants massive fights. Ryan wants big paydays. In his recent interview with Fight Hype, the 44-year-old elaborated on how Canelo influenced the Garcia versus Haney situation. Hearn said, look, you talk about Brooklyn. I mean, Brooklyn, New York. I think that's a brilliant move, taking it to Brooklyn to the Barclays Center. Hearn expressed satisfaction with the relocation of the Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney match to New York. He believes that while Garcia is a significant fighter, Devin Haney is poised to become the future of boxing. When you look at the landscape, who else are they going to fight? Like, and they could fight Javon, but let's be like, Ryan's obviously fought him. Devin feels rough, you know, roughing up everybody the wrong way. So I just don't think those fights are gonna get made right now. Consequently, as the chairperson of Matchroom, Hearn anticipates that the fight will be a sellout event in Brooklyn, New York. Hearn added, We saw so many PBC fights there, some of which worked, some of which didn't, but it's a fantastic arena, and New York is a huge catchment area for boxing. However, according to Hearn's remarks, one of the primary reasons why Garcia versus Haney won't take place in Sin City is because Canelo Alvarez is expected to make his comeback at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas on Cinco de Mayo weekend. Hearn said, And when you got Canelo Alvarez potentially fighting on May 4th, two weeks later, why not go to another massive market for that fight? So, I think New York's all always dying out for big fights. That's a massive fight. I expect it to sell out very quickly. In addition, Eddie Hearn believes that Ryan Garcia is a formidable opponent for Haney to contend with. I think there's an opportunity to sit down and make that fight very quickly. But Ryan will have his opinion of his value in the fight and his value of probably a split in the fight that Devin Haney probably won't agree to. In his view, Garcia possesses a good style that aligns well with facing someone as skilled as Devin. As per Hearn, Ryan is reactive, he can punch, and technically sound. However, if Hearn has to pick one, he will go with the dream. He said, I think Devin wins the fight. Devin's so good in so many areas. I think at 140 pounds, he is a different fighter. You saw that in the Regis Progre fight. The ongoing drama surrounding the Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia fight intensifies, reaching precarious levels that threaten its cancellation. Talking about the venue change, Devin Haney tweeted, The reason the fight is not happening in Vegas is because they don't want to affect Canelo ticket sales. However, Garcia is displeased with the change in venue and expressed his concerns on social media. Ryan Garcia then tweeted, This decision has nothing to do with NYC, but everything to do with business and what I believe is the best move for my career. But Devin Haney said, This dude is planning his escape. Ho ethnic talk that tough talk, but now talking like a bitch. To this, Garcia tweeted, Why are you trying to paint that picture to the public, towards the guy who is making you more money in your life and in your entire career? Sad to see. That is real behavior, which you learned from your dad, so I can't blame you. But this is not it. Ryan Garcia again tweeted, This is a MGM Vegas fight, doing everything we can to bring this to Vegas and giving this fight what it deserves. Garcia has made it evident that he prefers the fight to be held in Las Vegas for business reasons, as indicated by his tweet. The ongoing exchange of remarks is raising concerns about the potential cancellation 
cancellation of the bout. However, recently, Ryan Garcia opted for a different method to generate excitement among his supporters, taking to Instagram, the Victorville native penned, It's getting scary for everyone, accompanied by a series of pictures depicting him apparently gearing up for the fight. Given the multitude of twists and turns along their journey to the boxing ring, their forthcoming bout promises to match the intensity of climactic scenes from the most gripping blockbuster films. Now remember the new training footage of Haney? Well, Michael Benson recently tweeted, Devin Haney in the gym over the weekend, training for the Ryan Garcia fight on April 20th. Haney seems assured about the upcoming bout and is exerting full effort to ensure Ryan Garcia's defeat in April. By learning from Gervonta Davis's match last year, he could very well achieve his goal. <laughs> As you can see, Haney is seen practicing body shots on a heavy bag, starting with light punches and finishing with a lightning-fast body shot. This might present a difficulty for Garcia, given his susceptibility to such punches in previous encounters. In the same video, he is also shown working on a double-end bag with three other individuals, each taking turns to land their shots. Meanwhile, fans finally have what they've been clamoring for, and they owe it to Bill Haney's persistence, which cut through the stubbornness of Oscar De La Hoya and Eddie Hearn to make this fight a reality. Bill Haney shared his efforts with Nuke, explaining how he seized an opportunity to showcase two young fighters at the peak of their careers. He added, Oscar could have stood in the way of this. Ryan is contractually tied to Oscar. Devin is not contractually tied to Matchroom. I was able to go out and talk to Oscar on that infamous day with Bernard Hopkins, and I was able to whisper to Oscar. When questioned about Devin Haney's contractual relationship with Eddie Hearn, the central figure of the Haney family clarified that their agreement with Matchroom Boxing differs from the one Ryan Garcia has with Oscar De La Hoya. While Garcia is bound Bound by a legal contract with De La Hoya, the same is not true for Devin Haney and Hearn. How so? Bill Haney said, What we have is another agreement. It was a right to match. Right to match, right? Obviously, Eddie couldn't match it because he didn't have the fighter. I got the fighter in Ryan Garcia and made the deal with Golden Boy. But the fight was actually made. I made the fight with Oscar. Earlier, Haney had praised the head of Golden Boy Promotions for his role in facilitating the fight. He reiterated this sentiment during his appearance on the MMA Hour. Upon approaching the American boxer turned promoter, Haney found that the the latter grasped the significance of the bout. Promoters now are working together. I think we've been working with everyone, Haney said. Nevertheless, the negotiations were tumultuous and attracted attention as they briefly veered off course when Garcia pursued Raleigh Romero, Isaac Cruz, and Jose Ramirez, accompanied by the added spectacle of social media disputes. In the lead-up to the highly anticipated bout between Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney, Josh Taylor, a respected figure in the boxing community, shared his insights on the matchup, highlighting the strengths and potential weaknesses of both fighters. He said, It's a great fight with two great fighters. It's a great matchup. I think Ryan Garcia's speed is good. He's got good good speed and he's good with his left hook and things like that. Taylor acknowledges Ryan Garcia's impressive speed and his prowess with the left hook. I've seen a couple of things from Ryan Garcia. I don't really know if he's got the heart. Probably likely that he can quit. You know, I think he quit against uh, Javonna Davis. Uh, I think he swallowed it and took the knee and decided not to get up. It's, it's, it's a great fight with two great fighters. You know, it's, um, it's a great matchup. I think that Ryan Garcia's speed is good, you know, he's got good speed and he's good with his left hook and things like that, but in terms of his boxing abilities and his ring generalship, um, I think that's on Devin Haney's side, I think he's much the much more complete fighter, the much more well-rounded fighter, um, so I would say on, on the boxing brains and the side of things and the skills, I would say it's on Devin Haney's side. However, he casts a shadow of doubt on Garcia's overall boxing skills and determination. Taylor added, But in terms of his boxing ability and his ring generalship, I think that's on Devin Haney's side. He's the much more complete fighter, the much more well-rounded fighter. So I would say boxing brain and the skills, I would say it's on Devin Haney's side. The critique extends deeper when Taylor touches upon Garcia's heart and resilience, particularly referencing a previous bout against Gervonta Davis. Taylor suggests that Garcia may lack the mental fortitude needed in high-stakes matches Matches, implying that Garcia's decision to take a knee against Davis raises questions about his determination and ability to withstand pressure. Taylor said, I've seen a couple of things from Ryan Garcia. I don't really know if he's got the heart. I just think that he's probably likely to quit. I think he quit against Gervonta Davis. I think he swallowed it and took a knee and decided not to get up. I think he quit there. Despite his criticisms, Taylor remains open to the unpredictability of boxing and the potential for any fighter to rise to the occasion. He reflects on the nature of the sport and the business aspects that influence 
influence matchups. Acknowledging the possibility of facing Garcia at a different weight class if it makes sense professionally and financially. He added, You never say never in this fight game. It's like if it makes business sense and it's a big fight and he wants to come up to 140, absolutely. You know, we were talking a few years back about potentially fighting down the line, so yeah, absolutely. Furthermore, Taylor briefly mentions other fighters like Cruz and Raleigh Romero, admitting a lack of familiarity with their careers. His comments suggest a focus on fighters who have directly impacted his weight class or have been on his radar for potential bouts. Taylor added, I don't really know. I've not seen Cruz fight an awful lot, and I don't think Raleigh Romero is the greatest of boxers. It's not two guys that I've really kept my eyes on, to be honest. Overall, while Taylor respects Garcia's abilities, he firmly believes that Haney's superior skill set and mental toughness make him the favorite in this high-profile fight. However, he also leaves room for the unpredictable nature of boxing, where a single fight can change the trajectory of a boxer's career. Additionally, even Clarissa Shields comprehends the importance of this matchup and has voiced her prediction for the impending fight. Clarissa Shields, a boxing icon in her own right, shared her insights on the Haney versus Garcia showdown, favoring the champion. Shields said, It just seems like that to me. Devin Haney has had harder fights. He has had more challenging fights and he's grown more. I don't know if I can say that about Ryan. While recognizing Garcia's explosive abilities, Shields highlights Haney's experience in challenging fights and his continual improvement as significant advantages. She envisions a closely contested beginning, with Garcia showcasing his strengths, but ultimately predicts Haney asserting dominance as the fight progresses into the later rounds. Furthermore, she stated that Haney would win via a unanimous decision against Garcia. Even though she also mentioned, I see that as a very close competitive fight early, and I say that because of Ryan's attributes, like he has a heart, right? He's fast. He's flashy. Moreover, Devin Haney recently delivered a harsh jab at his opponent during an interview. Even after being chosen by Shields, Haney discussed how he plans to force Garcia to surrender, drawing parallels to a previous bout where Garcia, a native of Victorville, faced a similar outcome. He pointed out an early night knockdown and a seemingly harmless body shot that caused Garcia to take a knee and be counted out. Haney interpreted this as a potential character flaw, indicating that such vulnerability might resurface when faced with pressure. Haney said, We've seen Ryan quit before, and I think that this won't be anything different. I think, you know, once you have that quit in you, it's installed in you. You know how to do it, and I think he'll quit on April 20th. The dream is determined to shatter his opponent's aspirations and secure the title for the first time. With a tied 3-3 record in their amateur bouts, the upcoming fight will also grant one of the fighters boasting privileges. Recently, in a moment of urgency, Bill Haney took to social media to deliver a stern warning to King Rai before their impending clash. Amidst the altercation on Super Bowl Radio Row, Ryan Garcia referred to Bill as a pimp and alleged that he was exploiting his son. Consequently, in retaliation to these disparaging remarks, Bill appears to have initiated a social media campaign against Garcia. Team Garcia, I don't know what got into you the last time I saw you. But you better tell that muscle head, meat head, fresh on the scene, fresh out of jail, Barracuda looking. In his latest barrage of posts today, Bill, adopting a menacing tone akin to The Undertaker, cautioned Garcia that their upcoming April bout would be intense and brutal, hinting at a potential bloodbath. Turning to Instagram, the father of Devin shared a clip of himself on the platform with a grim caption. It is going to be a bloodbath in Brooklyn, New York. However, the contents of the clip were even worse. With WWE's Undertaker's ring walk music in the background, Bill said, You listen up, and you listen good. April 20th is 4x20, and it's all smoke. It's Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia at the Barclays Center, and it's going to be a bloodbath. Now we know that Ryan Garcia earlier claimed that he had a surprise for NY during the press conference. So in the clip, Bill Haney said, We heard you had a new teammate for the press conference, but you best believe Devin Haney and Team Haney are going to be ready. However, this wasn't the first time Bill had taken shots at Garcia. Following Garcia's derogatory remarks labeling Bill as a pimp in an attempt to stir up controversy surrounding their fight, Bill appears to be amplifying the animosity between them. Sharing a picture of a book named Pimp, A Story of My Life, Bill wrote, Here you go, kid. Ryan Garcia read this, and your ex-wife will magically walk back in your life, and you will live happily ever after. Notably, Garcia announced his separation from his wife right after announcing the birth of his son, which garnered him a lot of criticism from his fans. Adding fuel to the fire is Abdullah Mason, who has sparred with Haney previously, offering his predictions for the match. When interviewed by the reporter regarding the Garcia-Haney fight, Mason emphasized their history of amateur bouts. It depends, you know. They both could fight, so you never know. They went 3-3 three and three in the amateur, although the pros are different. So you can get it at 50 by 50, said Mason. Though Mason wasn't sure who would get the upper hand during the fight, he revealed what he had observed. I could say right now, from what I'm seeing off of social media, you can never judge off that, but I'm seeing Devin looking a little more focused right now, said Mason. 
Elaborating on his point further, Mason stated, Whoever is more focused on outside of the ring, so I think Devin, he focused right now, so that's what I'm going to lean towards. Meanwhile, another rising star in the featherweight division has made his predictions for the Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney fight. Bruce Carrington commented, Ryan Garcia is kind of like has to prove himself again and try to show fans if he's going to give Devin Haney some work. Just like Mason, Carrington reflected on Ryan Garcia and Haney's amateur fights and claimed, I feel like Devin Haney edges, but they fight in the amateurs. It was years ago, but they still have some of the similar style. However, the 26-year-old added, I honestly feel like the fight could go either way. With the Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney fight inching ever closer, the boxing world has started to take their pick between the two boxers. The upcoming fight will be Haney and Garcia's boss battle as they settle the debate about who is better once and for all. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos.